Hello Autobots and Decepticons, my name is Soulmonger and today I'd like to welcome you to the Decepticon campaign final episode. And in this episode it's going to be kind of different because we will be spending our time talking about who we are going to battle pretty soon coming up here which is Omega Supreme. And he is the last thing that is standing in Megatron's way to Cybertron's core. So. Without further ado, let's get right into it. G1 Omega Supreme. Omega Supreme is one of the biggest Autobots, as you guys can tell from his size in this. And he transforms into three different things. A large rocket base, a rocket, and a tank. And this doesn't involve much transformation. He only has to move his main body and his tank instead of moving a ton of different pieces around to make him transform. So in other words, he transforms into a defense base where he has a rocket base with a rocket and a tank. He is known for great strength and even greater courage. And he also understands that he is the last line of defense against the Decepticons. So if he falls, it will be unlikely that any other Autobot will be able to take his place. When he is in robot form, he has on match strength. He can crush a mountain side with a single blow and is known to lift up to 300,000 tons with his claw arm. And on his left hand, there is no hand. He is handless, but he is armed with a plasma blaster that can just destroy anything you can imagine. He also has a bunch of different weapons located all over his body. And although he is extremely strong and powerful, he is extremely slow and his rocket takes up a lot of fuel so you won't see him moving around a lot. Alright, now a little bit about his story. Millions of years ago, Omega Supreme was a member of the legendary Guardian Robots which we talked about in an earlier episode and he was in charge of defending Crystal City, the most prestige city on Cybertron. Here he was friends with the Constructicons which created this city However, the Constructicons were attacked by Megatron and then were converted into Decepticons. This is where Omega Supreme's journey starts off. He was told by the new Decepticons, the Constructicons, which I will flash up on the screen. The Constructicons, which consist of Scrapper, Bone Crusher, Scavenger, Mixmaster, Hook, and Long Haul. I won't go over all these guys because I don't believe I'm going to have enough time in this episode. But if I do, I will go over some of them at the end if I manage to have enough time. So they form Devastator. And they manage to lure Omega Supreme away from Crystal City. And then they destroyed it. And this devastated Omega Supreme. When he came back, he tried to reprogram them. But the programming that was given to the Constructicons by Megatron was irreversible and Omega Supreme was unable to convert them back into Autobots. So the Constructicons then lured Omega Supreme into an ambush and tried to convert him into a Decepticon but Omega Supreme being enormous and super strong was easily able to defeat Devastator and the Constructicons were able to flee before they could be destroyed. And ever since Omega Supreme was betrayed by the Constructicons, he definitely changed and he felt a lot of hate for these Constructicons after being such good friends with them in the past. And he was determined to get his revenge because after the Autobots and the Decepticons left Cybertron in their starship and we learned about this where they landed on Earth, Omega Supreme pursued the Constructicons when they left in search for Megatron and he pursued them for over four million years across galaxies and really wanted to get his revenge. But the Constructicons were able to find Megatron and rejoin them on Earth and once Mega Supreme reached Earth for the most part he was only a transport for the Autobots as well as their last line of defense. Later on Omega Supreme was in search of the Voltronic Galaxer and this turns audio waves into pulses which allows the Autobots and the Decepticons to easily translate languages into their own. It also can intercept and decode different transmissions and this mission led Omega Supreme to the moon. Here he came into battle with Astrotrain and Astrotrain made fun of him for him being outdated. 
but Astro Train paid for that knock on Omega Supreme as Omega easily cradled him like a little baby in his claw and owned him. And the Decepticons found a pool here of Electrum and this made them invulnerable for a certain amount of time and it wears off over time. So Omega Supreme's weapons had no effect on them and Omega Supreme then fell to them. But the Autobots got payback when they located this pool for themselves and used it and they gained the advantage on the Decepticons because their coding was wearing off. A little bit farther down, Omega Supreme carried Perceptor and Jazz on a rescue mission to one of Saturn's moons and he probably should have filled up his energy beforehand so I don't get this, but he ran out of energy on his way there and he was left stranded teeter-tottering on a lake of a deadly liquid. But Perceptor, being super awesome and scientific, of course, found these awesome energy crystals on the moon and was able to recharge Omega. But the crystals that Perceptor was using to refuel Omega Supreme exploded, but Omega Supreme managed to save them by transporting them across the moon to safety. And proving Omega Supreme's loyalty to the Autobots, he had a chance for revenge at the Constructicons when they were mining an asteroid. But this asteroid turned into being this huge creature that started to attack San Francisco and Omega Supreme had the chance to destroy the Constructicons or a chance to lure the creature back but he chose his Autobot duty and he lured the creature back to the asteroid. Precisely as I had planned, Decepticons! Man the turrets and blast that obsolete Hulk out of the sky! Targets reacquired. Attack commencing. Decepticons, prepare for destruction. So a couple episodes go by and it's kind of the same thing over and over. Omega Supreme comes in, transports the Autobots away to save the day. So he has a pretty big responsibility as a Transformer as he keeps all the other Autobots safe and does a good job at it. And even though he's enormous and probably could destroy a lot of Decepticons, he is always more concerned about the well-being for his fellow Autobots. And he seems to have a thing for the Decepticons that seem to form larger Transformers because he goes on to help the Aerial Bots who also form a larger Transformer in Superion and he goes on to help them defeat Menasaur in one battle later on. So a little bit farther down the road, Unicron comes into the picture. And if you guys don't know who Unicron is, watch the G1 movie because Unicron is a monster. And actually right now I'm going to take some time and I'm going to talk about Unicron because I think he has an interesting backstory. And I will also talk about his brother Primus. Unicron has a twin brother named Primus and Primus is also his eternal arch enemy. So that is kind of interesting, nothing like some brotherly love right there. And besides being called Unicron, he is also known as the Lord of Chaos, the Chaos Bringer, and the Planet Eater. And he is known for his massive form. He transforms into a giant planet and also devours any planet he sees in his path. And you're probably wondering why he would destroy all these planets, moons, stars, everything that he sees in his path. It is because he is powered by the consumption of all these different things. And Unicron's ultimate goal is to destroy everything. He thinks all the things around him are just annoying independent creatures and he will not find self-enlightenment or peace until he is the only thing surrounded by nothingness. And to help him with his goal, he has super advanced computers powering him which allows him to evolve a map of the universe and helps him travel across different realities at will. So he is able to calculate how much of the universe that he knows of is destroyed at all times. And the only thing he fears is Primus's essence and we all know this as the Matrix or what is contained inside the Matrix. So now let's take some time and talk about his brother, or his twin brother, and it kind of reminds me of the movie Twins a little bit, but not really because Danny DeVito versus Arnold Schwarzenegger, I don't know if that'd be much of a fight since Danny DeVito would obviously destroy Arnold. Alright, Primus is the creator god of the Transformers, 
an ancient being whose origins date back to the beginning of the universe. And pretty opposite from his twin brother, he is a force for good. So this is why these twin brothers are arch enemies. So in order to have a good, you must have a bad. So Primus eventually transformed himself into Cybertron. And to kind of touch on the Matrix a little bit, I kind of worded it funny just a second ago when I was talking about Primus here, but a portion of his life essence is contained within the Matrix, and we all know that the Matrix chooses the leader of the Autobots. So that is a little bit about Unicron and Primus. I thought that would be interesting to throw that in there when we got to him, since these are kind of, I guess, the creators of everything. Please, like a coward. Now, let's finish the job. Omega Supreme is vulnerable. Megatron and his Decepticons must press their attack if they hope to overcome the Guardian of Iacon and force him to unlock the gateway to Cybertron's core. You think he survived all that? As long as there is enough left to open the Omega Gate, I care not. Uh, Megatron, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Power cells drained. Initiate energy recovery subroutine. Send source indicate that those batteries are the source of Omega Supreme's rejuvenation. Scanning. Decepticon intruders. Weapons engaging. Weapons engaging? I thought we had this guy's feet! Engine. Supreme's tractor beam. Sit cover before he fully charges it. Our weapons are doing anything to him! Scans indicate that Omega Supreme's defensive barrier does not extend to his turrets. Warning. Vulnerability in select subsystems. A battery full of energon just came up out of the floor! Is that normal? Omega Supreme appears to be using the batteries to repair his turrets. Decepticons, we must move quickly! Use dark energon on the core battery! So, back on to Omega Supreme. So, kind of near the end of the G1 series, Omega Supreme is used to transport some Autobots to Junkion to investigate some strange happenings on the planet. And he was then shot down by Cyclonus Scourge and the Sweeps, and he crashed the Autobots on an asteroid. The Great Omega Supreme is vulnerable at last! Decepticons, attack! So he was then repaired, and he arrived on Junkion, and then he battled against the Decepticons here, but he was knocked down by a blast from Galvatron's cannon. Situation suboptimal. What are you waiting for? Use the Dark Energon on it! He recovered quickly and then continued his battle with the Decepticons until Blaster asked him to bring him the altitude to counter the Quintesson signals. And the last thing we kind of hear about in Omega Supreme's G1 history is that he was asked to defend this Prime Energy Tower that makes Prime Energy. And it was on this one planet called Themina. And the Decepticons also sent some big guns over there, such as Devastator, Menasaur, and Bruticus. So Omega Supreme, Superion, and Defensor were fighting these three Decepticons. I, Megatron, have defeated Omega Supreme! Uh, all hail Megatron! Systems corrupted. Power level 49%. Repairs initiating. He's getting back up? What do we do now? Megatron. Be advised, Omega's engine of shielding is exposed, but he still functions. There is a barrier of armor plating protecting his chest. How are we supposed to get through that armor plating? Stop whining and start shooting, breakdown! Immediate surrender required. Access to core impossible. He's drawing energy from Cybertron's core! What amazing power! I must have it for myself! 
thought she said his power was drained. He's got even more now than he did to begin with. It makes no difference. Not even Omega Supreme can stop me now. So as these guys were battling, of course Galvatron throws in another Decepticon, Predaking. And with a single blow from his fist, he toppled Omega Supreme, Defensor, and Superion. And that is the last we hear about Omega Supreme. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I understand that parts were kind of confusing because they were confusing to me as well along the way. But I hope that we all learned something and now we're all smarter for it. So remember to leave a comment, leave a rating, and have a good day, guys. Situation critical. Omega Supreme's internal shield is down. Use the Dark Air John to corrupt him. I know what to do, Soundwave. Be silent or face my wrath. Systems failing. Corruption total. Yes. Yes! The Autobots' most powerful weapon, and the key to the core of Cybertron, are mine! The universe shall hear my name, and tremble! Omega Supreme has fallen. Corrupted by the influence of Dark Energon. Triumphant, Megatron forces the Guardian to open the Omega Gate and lead the Decepticons to the core of Cybertron itself. At last, the core of Cybertron is mine! Are the Corruptors in place? Yes, Lord Megatron. Then let it begin! A glorious new age is upon us, my brethren. With Dark Energon infused into the core, Cybertron is mine to command!